uh, we're going to start with a tool called Burp Suite over here. So today we're going to start how to manage Burp Suite and what is the use of Burp Suite in our web application part. So let me tell you one thing, when you are using Burp Suite, most of the uh, website pen testing part, we use Burp Suite for the ma uh, manual pen testing for the web application or website. So we're going to start with the Burp Suite configuration files today. And we can see that I already opened this one. So you can see, you will see three, uh, three tabs over here when you open this one. So welcome to Burp Suite Professional. Use the below to create an open project. So we have three tabs over here. The first one is a temporary project. The second one is a new project on this and the open existing project. So if you are new in the Burp Suite, all you have to do is to use the temporary project. The temporary one, it means it's normal. One. So or if you want to use new project on this, you can save your files over here. Or you can choose the files from the server side. For right now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a temporary project site. So if you do the next part, you will see, select the configuration that would like to load the project. So we're going to use the Burpsuit default part. And start up. So if you see over here on the screen, we can see that Burp Suite has, a, uh, this is the inter interface of your Burp Suite. And uh, the main use, if you talk about the major use of Burp Suite, it's a basically a proxy service. But so what is a proxy service? The Burp Suite will basically, it will be a mediator or you can say MITM, uh, you can say that one. And this will intercept the request or you can say the proxy server. So the major object of the Burp Suite is basically to mediate, to mediate or translate the communication between the two clients, the, the browser and the application. And in the browser, we can see the Burp Suite will capture all the traffics on the server side. So over here, we and this period of time is known as proxy services. If I talk about the book which I given you last time, see over here. I guess I have given this book to you guys. Yes. So this book is the important part of your learning of Burp Suite. For example, see over here. So you will see lots of things will be given one by one over here for practicing purpose. So let's do 100 size. So this is basically set up, set up, a, uh, set up of your environment. So you can use this environment over here. And if you have a Java file, so you can use Java if and jar, Burp Suite, the application that you want to use. So over here, if you are using this one on the Windows server, you can also use the same command, which is given over here. And over here, you can see that they have mentioned the temporary project, the new project on disk, and the open existing project. So they have given you step by steps all the things in your Burp Suite. So he also used the uh, Burp Suite default credentials. So how does it work? So majorly this is the important part. Using either the plain jar file or the Windows executables, you can launch the Burp Suite to start the proxy listener to capture the HTTP traffic. This is the important part. We're going to activate the proxy listener to capture the HTTP request. Why? because we have two clients, or you can say a client and a server. A client, which is our pen tester, and a server, which is an application. So the most important part over here, Burp Suite offers temporary and permanent project files to save the activities performed on the server. So it, ah, this is the normal thing. But the most important part is how does it works, the important thing. For example, if you see over here on the screen, Burp Suite described as an intercepting proxy. What is an intercepting proxy? Intercept, intercepting proxy is where we can simply hold the packet and read the content of that. And uh, you can see this means Burp Suite sits between the user and web browser and the application and intercept all the captures, all the traffic from following between them. This type of behavior is commonly referred as proxy services. So, what is the major objective of pen tester? How the pen tester works with this? So pen tester used intercepting proxies for capturing traffic following between a web browser and a web application for the purpose of 
analyze and manipulation you can see over here the most important thing they're going to capture the http request they can pause the http request over there and the most important part they said that they basically used to analyze and manipulation so you can also see over here intercepting proxy such as verb allows tester to intercept both http request and http response so the request is from the client side and the response from the server side which allow a tester to observe the behavior of the web application under the different conditions so this book the burbsuit hand book book is very important book for the starting of your burbsuit burbsuit so the best important part when you are using burbsuit uh, you can use to configure your Fi uh, firefox browser network settings and why that is important because to intercept or make a proper request this enables burbs to capture all the http traffic that falling between a browser and the target web application yani ki client aur server ke beech mein jo bhi talk ho rahi hai wo check karna so over here to point the running of intense verb that is an important thing but over here the most important part if you see in the chapter 1 they are giving all the things that you want to learn so if you see in this one this is it, it will show you all the things around here you have to make a proper configuration with your local host server with the port assigned over there so over here the interception is also there but before if you are using verb suit you have to proper make a request a proper setup for example see over here we have the interface of the verb suit we have some dashboard target proxy intruder repeater sequencer decoder comparator extender project options user options there are many things for example first of all you need to set up your proxy with the browser with your local host ip address so let's check my local host ip address so i have configured so in this one you can see two ip address which is your eto and your allo which is your local host so we can we either we can use this ip address and either we can use this one hmm? because the client request will be created from the specific ip address so what i'm going to do i'm going to use uh, firefox because the client request will be generated over here so the main objective if you see over here uh, that i have some you can visit the port swagger which is a, a website of your burp suite you can simply learn all lots of things over here and what we going to do we going to try to manipulate the browser so in the dashboard before the dashboard let's set up the proxy this is the important part so in the proxy we can see we have interception so in the default this is on so we have to off this one it, this one will not work until we simply configure our browser so you can see a raw a raw uh, a raw over here is means a raw packet a packet which is coming from the client side and has something different to analyze so this is basically a http request kind of things for example when you simply intercept a request you, you will see the interception request over here the history the history tab will show you the connection the web socket will show you the urls direction and edited and lengths so the very first thing you have to go to the proxies option why because you have to activate the proxy listener so the proxy listener to receive incoming http request from the browser you will need to configure the browser when you will use it for proxy server so i we can have we have some buttons over here we can edit or we can add to our own binding we can use for binding our local host we have to simply put the port number we have to open a port number in our local server and you can select the ip address either you can use 12700.0.1 either you can use the 
IP address of my local machine, which is over here. So request handling, you can simply redirect the client request, this setting control, whether verb redirect request received by the listener. Redirect, list, uh, redirect the host, redirect the port, or you can use force use of SSL. Certificate, this is the important part. Why? Because certificate is basically used to capture the HTTPS packets. And if you're not, uh, if you're not generating a CS certificate, which is the important part in your verb suite, it will not generate anything. The CS certificate is the important part. Why I'm saying, why I'm saying this one? Because in the CS certificate, you will observe or you will have all the HTTPS packets to be intercepted. So the most important part over here, we're going to start with the different things. So we're going to use each installation of Burp to generate its own CA certificate that proxy listener can be used for SSL connection, negotiating SSL connection. So we can simply intercept the packets. So over here, you can see regenerate CA certificate. You can click on that. Are you sure you want to regenerate a Burp suit CA certificate? And I say, yes, yeah. what we want to. So the request will be generated by the, your local host. You can see there's a lot of other tabs, match and response, SSL pass through, miscellaneous. For miscellaneous, you can check uh, which uh, HTTP protocol you want to use. The HTTP slash 1.0 uh, is your version of your HTTP's request types. SSL pass through. Match and response, you can use this one for any of the uh, matches. For example, these are some headers given over here. Refer, accepting encryptions, response modification, intercepting server response. So the most important part, the CA certificate will be generated in your local host IP address, which is assigned by 1700.1.4.8.8. So if you simply write L host 0001 for ATAT, you will see a Burps with professional IP. So over here, you can see a CA certificate, which is CSR.DAR. So I already have the CA certificate, but we install the CA certificate over here. Is it okay, Dhruv, sir? Is it okay now, Dhruv, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. So I can see over here that I have uh, simply downloaded a CS certificate. So what are we going to do? We're going to simply install that CS certificate in our local browser, which means our Firefox. Because this is the first step you have to do. So in this thing, I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to go to the settings, open menu. So over, over here, you will see something like uh, some tabs or configuration files. So I'm going to use the preference. So I'm in the preference directory. So we need two things over here. As per the verb suit configuration part, which is given over here. So the first one is saying that you have to uh, you have to go to the network proxy. So we have to go to the next network proxy for intercepting allow. So listen to all HTTP traffic using verb. So you can use open the Firefox browser, go to the options, in the general, scroll down, write network proxy, and in the connection settings, select menu proxy configuration and type in the IP address, which is your local host and the port 88. So if you go over here, you can see this one. Manual proxy configuration and the port number and IP address will be the local host IP. So over here, we're gonna write network proxy. You can see the network proxy over here. 
So yes, go to the settings and we can see that use system proxy settings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the manual proxy and I have already have written the IP address of my local host, which is 127.0.0.1.488. Why? Because the, IP, the workflow local host IP address should be the same just like your browser site. So use this proxy for all service protocols. And okay. The next thing you can see that they have given all the things you have to use with the proxy. And uh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't happen to see any traffic, check whether the proxy in the setting is holding up the request or not. So over here, you can try many other things. For example. Intercept, intercepting the packet will be the important part. So let's try this one. Is it working or not? So let's try on. So it's saying your connection is not secure. We have some error. We have some CA certificate error. See? And why is this happening? Because we are visiting the HTTPS. So, if I simply remove this, will it work? No. For that case, what do you have to do? You have to install the CA certificate on the browser. So, we're going to write certificate over here. In the certificate, you will see something like uh, this when a server requests the proposal certificate. So we're going to do new certificate. And uh, an authority is we're going to import the C certificate. And we can see over here the CSR.dr certificate. So right click. So identify the website, identify the email users. Or you can simply examine if you examine the C certificate if you want. So this was for Port Swagger, as we know, Port Swagger, CA certificate, and we can see the fingerprint, the expiry date, and all, and the details over here. So each and every CA certificate has their own identification number. So, okay, and let's try this one now. Will it work? Yep. So I'm going to open again, and we can see that we have a request over here. And this one is working properly, because the client request is basically intercepted by the bug suit, and we can see the interception data. The most important part is this is a proper request which is generated by the client browser. And you can see there are some headers, which is a get header, a host header, a user agent header. These are the headers, basically. In the raw, you will see the pack in the raw data, the parameters, which are the parameters they are using. And you can see most of them are using the cookie parameter. A cookie parameter. A cookie parameter, a cookie type has different parameter, which is IP.jar and ID, and ID, and this is the value. And this value is from the browser client side. If you check for the headers, you will see in the header tab, you will see some headers with the values, which is a client request. And the browser and the client basically understand the binary equals, the hexadecimal value. So if you see over here, these are the binary, uh, these are the hexadecimal codes, and each and every each words over here is changed. So you can see the request over here. So if we talk about before that one, we can forward the request. We can see the request is from https google.com with the port number 4443. We can forward the packet or we can drop the packet. If we forward the packet, it will just go further. Or we can simply drop the packet. It will stop the request going to the exact website. 
and you can simply check an action in action you, there you will see some uh, some scan some intruder repeater sequencer compare decoder we can see all the things one by one and what you can do you can simply change the method the method which i'm talking about the, it, this is a get method the data which is translate uh, the transferring from the url section for example whatever the thing you will write over here it will transfer with the url section which is called get method and post method is totally different the post method is just like a search engine or a comment field or any of the things so other we can you can change the request method look if you write this one it will change to post method or it will change the get method so when you are simply uh, changing the request you will see some content type also the content type means the application type and the content length of the data so if i forward this one i can say it's showing me 405 error why because the the data we are generating from that was from get method and it basically changed in the post method so post and get are the important part over here but the important thing in your entire burp suite you have to learn about all these things so we're going to start with the basics command first so we have intercepted we have properly defined or simply set up our burp of uh, of uh, your burp suite now let's come to the functionality so if you see over here they are also given you all the things one by one in the book so we have getting to know about the book for tools which is chapter 2 and in this you going to learn about the site map the repeater the decoder and the intruder part <coughs> so let let us talk about the site map the site map is important part in your Web, uh, your web application site map has all the contents, or you can say a, a type of footprint, or as you can say a blueprint of the website. A blueprint, just like all the things which is given over there. If you see over here, we have traffic flowing between the your browser and the books. Yeah, that's the important thing because we intercepted the packet request. And site map is the important part. a site map if you if you, if you see over here there are two uh, sub tabs available site map and scope these are the two important things why because these are the important why because these will contain all the amount of information over uh, on the web server the amount of information over here it will contains all the blueprints for example the very first tool that you're going to see is called spider this is an important part spidering with the spider and spidering with the spider means mapping uh, mapping or crawling process spider is an another terms of mapping out or crawling a web application a crawling process to uh, is basically used for mapping exercises necessary uncover links folders and files present in the target web application So very first thing that you have to do is use the spider to identify the number of uncovered links, folders, and all the things one by one. So our main objective will be simply use the spider to identify the number of directories. So we're gonna use spider, and this is the new version of your Burp Suite. And we're gonna see over here there is no spider. <laughs> so we're going to use the if you see the button called new scan and new live scan these are the new spiders if you click on this you will see crawl and audit and crawl crawl and audit is basically used for identifying the number of directories uncovered links and audit means it will find the vulnerabilities also just like your nessus or other uh, automation tools or either you can use the crawl process So let's take a uh, testing website. So I'm going to take test php. Got one web. So this is my testing website. So we're going to take this one, and we're going to 
take the domain name. So we're going to copy the URL. And on the URL section, we're going to use the only crawl function. And we're going to put the URL. So you can see this is a HTTP website. Or you can see scan function, application login, resources pool. So we're going to use OK. And over here, you will see some requested widgets. So the most important part is your client request because it will it's an active method approach. So if you're crawling someone's website, it will make some logs in the back end of the victim site or the application or the web server. For example, the request you can see is 110. So if you want to check the URLs, you can visit the target tab. And in the target tab, you can see sitemap, scope, issue definition. And you will, you guys will see some contents, some issues, and the request and the response. So you can see uh, many other websites. So I'm going to select my one. This is your test php .com. This is our website, and over here we can see contents, and we can see some issues. Plus, in the in the bottom side, we can see the adversary, which is your content type, and we can see the client request and the response from the service. So before that, we can see the HTTP version is 1.1.1 and it's showing us 200. So let me tell you one thing. What is the 200 means over here? These are HTTP codes. And we're going to use this book, the Web Application Hacker Handbook. So in this, we can, we're going to use a chapter called the Web Application and Technology, the third chapter. And we're going to talk about the HTTP protocols. So if you open this one, you will first see the request, the HTTP request. So if you see over here, HTTP uses a message-based model in which the client sends a request message and the server returns a response message. Yes, this is the important part. The protocol is essentially connectionless. All through the HTTP uses a stateful TCP protocol and its transport mechanism. And exchange a request to the response in the automation transaction. So for example, when you're making a request from your browser, this is a thing. This is a proper request. All the HTTP messages, request and response consist of one more headers, each and one separate lines followed by the mandatory blank line. And if you see over here, you will see a get, or accept, a referral, a user agent. These are the headers which I was talking about. And each and every header has a different thing. For example, get method, the data which is transferring from the URL section. The refer is the URL which is visiting over here. The accepting language is your English. It could be any user agent, your browser. The data which is transferring from the browser side. Host is your website, the domain name. Connection is it. I'm making a proper connection or not. Cookie is all about the sessions. First of all, you need to understand how the request response works. And the, the most important thing is your HTTP version. It could be your 1.0, it could be 1.1. And by default, it will use the 1.1 version. For example, if you see over here, they have given you some headers. There are some points of interest in the sample request. For example, the refer header is used to indicate the URL 
from which the request originated. The user agent header is used to provide information about the browser and the client software that generated by the request. The host header specifies the host name and that appeared in the full URL, being an excel amount of food. Like, and the cookie header is used to submit the additional parameter that the server had issued with the client. So these are the important headers we're gonna. For example, when you simply create a request, the server side will be give you a response also. And that time, they're gonna use some um, request for HTTP 1.1 protocol, and you'll see some 200 OK. You can see they are using the same uh, same HTTP. Version. The 200 over here indicates that the packet has been received and the client has uh, the request has been successful. The date, the server, the, those, the most important thing you can see the server. The server which leaks their internal is it a Linux or a Linux server? But you can see Microsoft IIS 6.0. IIS is basically your application for hosting your website. X powered by X powered by means your server is using uh, uh, programming languages. The set cookie, the cookie parameter is basically tracking X, and you can see some uh, parameter like your expires, your content type, the pragma, your content length. The content length is the important part, which is your size of the packet. And you will see some data like in HTML forum from the server side. For example, the request method was an important part, but, but what about the HTTP methods? The HTTP version belongs to, this is the important part. See, the server, this is a response header. A textual reason phrase, a server header contains a banner indicating the web server software being used and sometimes other details such as install modules and the server operating system. The set cookie para header is used to browse for further cookie. Is it uh, submitted back in the cookie header or subsequent request from the server? The pragma, basically this is will, will store the response code in their cache files. Almost all the HTTP response contains a body from the blank line and the header. Contain length indicate the length of the message body in the bytes. So this was an important part. This book is important, I guess, I guess. It will show you all the mechanism, what is the use of URL, each and everything. For example, our most important thing is to learn about the HTTP codes. So in the HTTP codes, if you see over here, we were talking about 100, 200, 300, 400, and 500. And why this is important? Because each and every HTTP request or response has a message. For example, you can see response message contains a status code in the first line, indicating the result for the request. For example, if you, when you are generating a client request, when you are generating a google.com or facebook.com, from your client side, it will generate a 100 request HTTP packet. It could be a information, which is a request from the client side. When the client request has been submitted, when the client request is submitted from the browser side, it will show you 200. And 200 over here in, indicates that the request was successful. The request was successful. The 300 over here, if you see the 100, uh, the, uh, the status for 300, the client is redirected to a different resource. It means the data we are looking for in the browser, it's not over there. And the browser and, and the website has redirected the client request to a different resource. 400, the request contains an error of some kind. It could be 404. The 500 over here, the server can uncounted an error fulfilling the request. It could be server side maintenance or it could be anything. For example, you can see. 100 means continue sent by some second terms. 200 indicates that the request was successful. 201 is also there, created in return of response to output request. Output request means we add, we can add additional data. 301 moved permanently, 302 is found 
404.modified 400 which is your bad request 401 which is unauthorized 403 which is your forbidden 404 not found 405 method not allowed you have to understand the core mechanism of the web website before that 413 request entity too large 404 request URL too long 500 inter uh, internal server error 503 service unavailable so there are lots of other things that we can learn So over here, you will see some something like this one. These are the important parts. So the main objective, the main objective was to understand the core mechanism. We can see the 200 equals to over here. And if you simply crawl this one. The request has been completed. And you can see the website, I guess, is also done. So you can see that the host over here show, it will show you the website name and the method was a post method or a get method. You can see the URL, the parameters, the parameters are the important thing. And these are the files and the status code, which is 100, 200 and the length of the book packet also and you can see the file format or title or you can see the comments so if you simply click any of the request you will see the response is also changing if i click in this one the content type is the response from the server side and we can see the request And when I'm simply click, clicking the post method, it's showing me the request contents. Then this 28. Search for, search for, go button and test. These are the parameter values. So spider is the important part to identify the number of directories on the server side, or either you can use the scope method. If you add, if you right click over here, if you Simply, uh, if you want to use scope, scope is basically used to uh, use a specific website. If you are using scope over here, it will simply scan the specific website and it will show you the main results. So you can simply do this one. Uh, you can add the scope, and scope will use only the specific browser to uh, explore. So defining scope target for your current work, this configuration affect the behavior of the tools. Through uh, this is important. This is not an important part. So if you already see this one, the scope will let you know about the current amount of information on the browser side. Issue identifiers. You can use some other tools over here to simply scan. You can see lots of things about the additional data. OS command injection, you will see the descriptions, plus the CV numbers, SQL injection. It will show you the list of contained definitions and remediations also. But the most important part is your spy, uh, spidering to identify the number of parameter values. But over here, in this book, there is one more tab. We're going to learn about the spider. We're going to learn about the repeater also. Repeating with the repeater. 
this is the important part and why this is important because through the repeater we can simply allow to change the request content body type if you see over here repeater allows for slight changes of tweak to the request it is displayed in the left hand side windows go to the button and the following should and repeat if i say the layman language repeater is basically used is basically used to reissue or you can simply talk about to change the modif uh, to change the request according to the server side so for example if we talk about the repeater the repeater side which is given over here we can simply right click on a specific parameter value so i'm going to click i'm going to use this first one so right click and you can see send to intruder send to repeater so we're going to use the intruder repeater first so when i simply use the repeater the client request will be sent to the repeater tab and in the repeated tab is basically used to simply manipulate or simply change the client request according to the server for example i can see this is a request and this is the response on the target website which is your test.php.com so we know about the raw params headers as well as some values hmm? let's see the raw packets so we, we have a post method we have some parameters like test search for go button and you can see the parameters over here also and you can simply check the behavior between the client and the uh, server so if you simply do execute so the data which we are looking from on the server side it will show you the data over here so for example you can see the server is ignice x powered by php version the content length the type of body and you can see the source code of that search for the id number of this this is the id number and id is the parameter value you can see all the things one by one over here so the most important part how the we can change we can simply change this one if i simply change the method to get method i can see the method i can change to get method also so if you see if you want to uh, if you want to check the url data you will see some the output and we can see that output has been changed why when we are using a post method it means the data which is delivering from the client side in a field or a comment field so if you want to see the response code from the server side you can simply click over here and you can use show response in browser tab you can copy the url and you can simply paste it over here to check the response code and you can see that the parameter values are basically are delivering from the url section but if you use this one you can see lots of things for example let's try crow on the search parameter search for crow there's no output over there but how attackers use this one so i'm going to change the request according to my and what i'm going to do uh let's see which parameter value reflects over here so i'm going to use the word called hello hello to and hello so we going to check if any of the words in the parameter value reflects from the server side it would be a plus point for us so let's see let's execute this one and we can see the client request has been submitted means the client request has been executed on server side for example i simply delivered a value call so 
So we're going to do, we're going to check for the word of hello, which parameter is affecting all. So if I see over here, hello2 was reflected and in the search parameter. All you guys can mute your mics, please. So over here, I'm going to display a simple script of Java. So I'm going to use script tag. Over here, I'm going to use the same one. And we're going to use alert function. So in alert function, I'm going to write anything which I want. So I'm going to use the double quotes. We, why? Because we're going to simply do a proper uh, do, uh, domain test. So I'm going to write document dot domain. So let's see, is it executing or not? So show response in browser, copy the URL, and let's paste it. And you can see that it's running document on the way. Uh, but let me try one more thing. So I'm going to use a single code over here. Let's execute this one. Show response in browser. And just executing the same thing. So over here, the, with the help of repeater, we can do lots of things. If you simply do, if you learn about repeater, you can modify the request according to your own need. It will show you how to use, and they're basically using HTTP history. If you see over here on a browser, you can either go this one. It will show you all the websites. See. This was a Google, and this is a test PHP. You can see the lens of the packets over here also, and they are using the search parameter. You can check one by one all the things. You can use it for send to repeater or any of the things, because uh, the history, HTTP history will uh, detect all the protocols away. All the data, web sockets. So that's why you can see this books is an important part. You can see the request parts. You can see all the things, and we can see decoders with decoding with the decoders. This is also one of the tab in your Burp Suite. So if you see over here, Burp Suite decoder is a tool that allows the tester to convert the raw data into encoded data or to take encoded data. That convert into the plain text. Deco uh, decoder supports several formats, including URL encoding, HTML encoding, base 64 encoding, and binary code, hash data, and others. <coughs> For example, let me show you one thing. The data which are transferring from this in a plain text, I can change this data into a URL also. So Let's copy this one. And if I want to see why I'm changing this data, why I'm encoding this data, because if I encode this data, the server will not, not read the packet. It will simply put a layer. So it will be executed in the back end of the server. So you can see over here the decoder. So you can put the data over here and you can decode this one, but we're gonna use the encoding part. On the URL section or the HTML, base64, SIXML, octa binary, let's use base64. So base 64 standard is basically used by the server side to encode their data. So let's copy this one. And I'm going to use on the repeater. Okay, sorry, I'm going to change this one. Uh, and I'm going to put the value. Over so let's execute. And we can see that the data has been executed upon the server side, which is showing 200 requests. So we can use show response in browser, copy the URL, and we can save it here. But this time, the the, pay, uh, the code has didn't execute. It's showing the data over here on the display part. 
for that case you can either use some different techniques either you can use for html tag also you can use this one with the html words can be work so i'm going to copy this one and change the value let's put it over here and execute so over here we can see the code has been executed properly and let's see if it has any response or not no see there is no response code. so majorly we can see we can simply uh, change the value data according to our own need and we can try to manipulate something else on this case decoder can be used in many ways to decode or encode the traffic for example there are many things you can do with the decoder or the any other tools over here for example let's talk about the tool called intuitor intuitor is one of the best uh, best function this is the third important part of your burp suite why because burp, burp intuitor is basically used for uh, your fuzzing fuzzing part for example you can see over here burp intuitor allows a tester to brute force or first specific portion of http messages and customize the payloads so in the uh, intruder part we can use it for multiple requests to be generated from the client side for example if i have a two parameter values uh, let me show you one thing let's talk about uh, this sign up page a username and a password so we have two parameter values which is a username parameter and the password parameter so what i'm going to do i'm going to intercept the packet first so let's put a value called 1 and 2 over here and intercept on so when i simply log in this one the packet has been stopped why because the packet is over here which is captured by the burp suite and we can see this was a post request user info.php the host the content type and the length of the packet so we are not going to forward this one we can send this one to the intruder part and we can drop the packet so you can see that packet has been stopped so what are we going to do we're going to send we already sent the client request to the intruder and we can see in the intruder part we can see the host name and the port number that was an 80 port and you can use the http port if you want to for secure connections so in the option tags in the option tag you can see the request the proper request of the server so over here we have two parameter values a username parameter and the password parameter we're going to use some words like two payloads options yes we already have the two payloads so over here to the help of intruder we're going to attack multiple request on a specific parameter value for example we're going to choose the attack type this is an important thing why because when you have some multiple payloads over here first remember one thing if you have some multiple parameter values over here you have to clear the tags first of all why because if you don't clear the tag it will use all the parameter values to pr perform a request attack so you can see the payload has been zero why because we have to select the specific payload parameter value to be attacked so i'm going to use this one and add a tag because we're going to use the uh, username payload to be attacked and we're going to use the password attack also but what is the major agenda of using burp suite intruder the major agenda of using burp suite intruder is to perform a brute force attack brute force attack 
so if i talk about brute force attack this is the most common nowadays to cracking uh, some login pages is for example in you, if you see over here in the cryptography a brute force attack consists of an attack submitting of many password and phrases with hope of the eventually guessing correctly so it means i have some bunch of words in a dictionary a dictionary which contains a username and passwords a simply word list you can we can see that one a simple word list can be used for performing brute force attack on the server side applications for example what is the use of uh, what is a brute force attack in with example this is one of the most common forms of brute force attack that uses a list of words and in a dictionary or to crack passwords all other types of attack may uses a, a list of commonly used passwords if you password is password for example a brute force would be able to crack your password within seconds you can see how does it brute force works an attacker dis, uh, decides on either intended target either encrypted files and been stolen or login pages they uses a computer program that configured to attempt entry and trying username and along with the millions of password combinations is it brute force is legal <laughs> it's illegal basically it's a black hat type attempt attack hacker to obtain a password or a pin it uses several it is a uh, repetitive trials and error attempt to guess the password to be break into a website or a services so there there are many things that we can perform over here with the help of burp suite but we going to use the intruder part that's why over here i have a dictionary a small dictionary which i created you can see burp.txt so over here i'm going to put some i'm going to put uh, under one which is called test i'm going to put a word called test over here so you can see i have some words like partho cross security admin contact the secret test prime there's a lot of words over here but the username and password should be there on that specific dictionary you can create your own dictionary with the help of crunch quill or you can download some dictionaries from the google drive so we're going to use the burp.txt dictionary so over here we can see the attack type in the attack type we can see that we have a sniper uh, we if you click over here we have some snipers battering ram pitchfork cluster bomb and what are these things these are the attack types these attack each and every specific attack has a different kinds of testing concept in the back end for example if you talk about the sniper let's see on the browser side So we're gonna go to the website called Port Swagger. Burp Intruder has four attack types, which are sniper, battering ram, pitchfork, and cluster bomb. Is a set of sniper by default according to the Burp documentation. So we're gonna use the Port Swagger. So in the Port Swagger, you can see payload options, request attempts, payload maker. add tags if you are uh, in the text is selected clear tags remove all the portion markers auto this makes guesses when it might be useful refresh clear less than one bar but the most important part is attacks to understand so if we talk about sniper sniper is basically used in a single param parameter attack this uses a single set of payload it target each payload portion is in turn and places each payload in the position of to be in turn so sniper is basically used in a single parameter value to attack and we are not going to use sniper we have multiple parameters so over here we can see the next one is battering ram the battering ram is also used a single set of payloads but in this one it will simply attack with any of the other payloads it's not going to make a proper it it will it won't it not will check the username and parameter with the password parameter it will simply perform a brute force attack so i'm talking about the permutation and combination permutation and combination is important part because it will check the first parameter with the second parameter also so it will define the username with the password pitchfork uses multiple payload sets 
But in this scenario, you have to use two different dictionaries in the pitchfork scenario in the specific parameter values. For example, in the username and the password, you have to use a different payload set. But it will not make a permutation and combination, it will not check the server sets. All you can use is cluster bomb. Cluster bomb is the important part because it will use permutation and combination so that all the permutation and all the payload combinations are tested. If there are two payload questions, the attack will be to take first payload with the second payload set in the options. The uh, the iterates through all the payloads in payload set one and portion one. So we're gonna use this one, cluster bomb attack. So if you see over here, we're gonna select the cluster bomb and we are not going to start this one first. We're gonna go to the payload. We need to set the dictionaries on this parameter values. So we're gonna go to payloads, payload one and payload two. So over here, you can see payload options, payload Payload processing, payload encoding means if when we are simply putting a word, it will change some in the URL encode URLs. So this is the important thing. But before that, you can see in the payload one and payload two are basically your payload one and payload two over here. You can simply use payload types. You can use runtime. You can use cluster iterate characters, numericals, null null byte. There's a lots of things. You can select different different types of things you're gonna select all the different things you can change the substitution words illegal encoding <laughs> so we're gonna uh, we're gonna use a simple payload we're gonna uh, we're gonna put a simple dictionary this payload type let us configure a simple list of strings and use wire payload so a load payload and i'm gonna use the bub file you can see those are the words over here. Let's select the payload two and load the same dictionary. Same thing over here again. So we have selected 11 words and 11 into 11, 121 words are there in the payload section. So either you can use for processing, you can define your own rules over here. So we are not going to define any rules. We're gonna go to the options and in the options tag, we can simply select the request or you can say the fast execution part. Fast execution for faster processor. Number of threads according to your server, number of threads retries failure, pause every milliseconds, or you can see start timing with the 10 minutes. And you can simply use a grep match. A grep match could be anything. It could be a directory, it could be access, it could be stack, it could be a file, and if you use this one, it will be good for you. So the, pay, uh, the, the, the payload type, in the payload type, you can see, uh, you can search for response for payload strings, cache sensitive matches, and executed payloads, and you can write never uh, redirection the client request. No, we're gonna don't redirect the client request. We're gonna simply start the attack. So when you start the attack, you'll see some words over there like this. So the scan has been done. So save the attack, result tab, server, columns, you can see over here, they use these all columns. So what we can do, you can repeat that one or you can simply do lots of things. So we can say, let's see the content type. So we can see 302, which is your client request has been redirected to a different source. So let's see over here. I don't use mostly this, this kind of things because it will show you the directory files on the side. So we can see all the words has been showing 302. Let's select which was affected. So,
So over here, you can simply check the length of the packet showing one thing. So brute force attack is a kind of major attack to simply guess the passwords on the server side. But over here, we, can, we can't see that the, there's any password over there. So there are many other things we can use it for performing attack. If you have a dictionary, proper dictionary, you can perform in a login form any of the request. Okay, we have a request over here, see. All the length of the packet, we are 200 requests. We're saying a client request has been successful. So if you see over here, the request and the response is saying 200. And if you try this one, it will show you 302, not, you must log in, see. So if you want to check the response code, you can try Show response in browser, copy to this one, and you can visit them. We are logging. So this was a type of attack on your server side. And most of the scenarios, verb suit is the first priority of the web application pen distance. That's why we have repeater, we have sequencer. Sequencer is just like here intruder to attack on a multiple parameter value with the, some tokens. Comparer over here, comparer are basically used to compare the two requests. So this function let you to award a byte level comparison between the different data, which you have from the client request we are talking about. Extender over here, you can see extender are basically some multiple application that you can use some for VA part, the vulnerability system part. You can see lots of other techniques over there. You can use those tools. .NET Beautifier, you can see the description, what is the use of that one, and you can install this one. And there are lots of other different techniques, user information platform for authentication. If we are using a uh, user in options, this one is basically used to uh, authenticate with that application for testing purpose, for logged in most of the times. So this was a proper work of your Burb Suite. And when you are done with, when you are done with your Burb Suite, please remember one thing, go to your, network and you have to go to a network proxy and you have to use the system network proxy setting. Otherwise the network will not work and it will show you some errors. So that was all over here and I will recommend you to st st uh, start reading this book and this one also. These two books are the important books. The Web Application Hacker Handbook to understand the core mechanism and the Burbsuit Cookbook is to understand the, how the Burbsuit works in the real life scenarios. So thank you so much, guys. This was all.